Welcome back to the channel. This is a video requested by DCVM Naturalist. I'm going to talk about my Opuntia prickly pear that I have here in my garden. This is the native variety that's hardy down to zone three. The fruit is basically inedible. It's also known as Eastern prickly pear. It's native to New Jersey. I found this uh, one pad at the beach and I stuck it in this pot a few years ago. And it's pretty much made copies of itself in this pot. I don't move the pot indoors for winter. It survives by shriveling up, and since it's hard to zone three, the roots don't freeze in this pot, believe it or not. The pads are covered in these very sharp, tiny hair-like growths called glochids. You don't want them on your hands. You'll never get rid of them. So this pot is in this corner under the steps outside, and I don't touch this pot at all. <laughs> the flowers look great, almost a fluorescent yellow. Unfortunately, I don't have photos of the fruit, but it's just slime and seeds inside, so... Totally inedible. I have seen cold hardy prickly pear with more pulp inside, but this one unfortunately doesn't have anything inside aside from the slime and the seeds. Um, what I do with the pads is when I do need to pull weeds, I use tongs because I mentioned you don't want the glow kids on your hands. Anyway, so I want to combine the hardiness of this Apuntia humifusa with something with better fruit that's also hardy. Long-term goal, I want to cross-pollinate this Apuntia Kakanapa elisiana, which is a spineless, glocodless, it still has glocids, just a very reduced amount, a version of the Kakanapa cactus. This cactus is rated for a zone 7, but not a northern zone 7, because we have wet winters, which causes the roots to rot. I've experienced that. The roots will rot, the plant dies from the bottom up, but the pads survive. This variety does not shrivel up like the Humifusa does. You can think of it as going dormant, it doesn't go dormant. Where the humifusa shrivels up, expels water, and basically goes to sleep, ignoring all the water that's poured on it all winter. This one is just constantly trying to take water up, which is, I think, what causes the rotting. So I asked some cactus enthusiasts on a forum, I mean, what can I do to help this survive? And some suggestions included, uh, put it in a drier spot, rocky area. And someone said, why don't you try grafting it? I have experience grafting dragon fruit, I never tried to graft this particular species, but the process is generally the same. Here I took a smaller pad of the Kakanapa and I sliced the Humifusa in half and stuck it on top with toothpicks and uh, some grafting tape to push it down, which didn't work. This actually ended up rotting, the top pad did. There simply wasn't enough pressure, so the top pad dried out and then just turned black. But seeing that I had more grafting material, I gave it another shot, and I tried it with a larger pad of the Kakanapa, which I have here in the next photo. As you can see, larger pad worked much better. I stuck the toothpicks right through, which is fine because the plant will eventually heal once you pull them out. And there is a photo of the graft union. The rubber bands worked way better for applying pressure. Using a larger pad, I didn't need to put a bag over this because a larger pad had enough water in it so it didn't dry out. So for two years, this graft has been in the ground. And as you can see, the Kakanapa has been growing. It has already survived a low of 2 Fahrenheit without any damage to the graft or the Kakanapa above it. But not all is sunshine and rainbows. Here I'm just showing the glow kids, but I'm going to explain what a problem is with this graft. So being that the Humifusa shrivels up, here's the graft union. It's just sandy from the Humifusa laying horizontally as it does in the winter when it shrivels up, which causes the Kakanapa to fall over. So a short-term solution is I put a stake here and I have a wire holding it up so it doesn't fall over. Long-term, this wire might start cutting into the pad, but I'll probably replace it with a cloth strap. The soil here is composed of clay. It did rain, I believe, the night before, so the ground is saturated. I don't water this cactus at all. And I am hoping that the bottom pad begins to cork up a little bit. I'm not sure if this species corks up as it spreads horizontally. I don't think it does. But we're always testing things out here. I do hope that it survives at least five years and I get fruit off the Kakanapa. Here's what the Humifusa looks like inside the pots. As I mentioned, I don't move it indoors. 
they shrivel up like this. It's still semi-dormant. Some of the fruit from uh, last season. I don't pick the fruit off. I just let the fruit fall back into the pot. The pads are supposedly edible, but with the amount of glow kids this species has, I like I said, I don't touch them. And I wouldn't want to get a glow kid in my mouth. <laughs> Here I went back to the graft and I secured it a little more with some wire at the bottom. And yeah, we'll keep you updated on this Kakanapa. Hopefully it flowers. See you later.